are the people who, the artists formerly known as English Heritage, for those of you who remember that. Um, and a few of the slides will still have English Heritage branding on them, I'm afraid. Um, but we recently had to upgrade the field recording software and hardware and general systems that we use on our sites. So I'm going to drag all the high highbrow discussion we've been having over the past few days about data standards and national collections, etc., right down to the very basics of site recording and the sort of nightmares that we hand over to Tim on a regular basis. So, um, right. So the background to this, um, I have a bit of previous at CAA, um, having spoken at CAA UK in 2009, shortly after we'd gone digital, um, about the process of picking a digital system, and in 2011 about what happened after we actually took it in the field and discovered all the things that we hadn't thought about <laughs> before we bought it. Um, so those papers are out there somewhere if anyone wants to, to catch up on them, but I will recap a bit on the process. Um, and this most recent um, upgrade and the, the paper today is prompted partly by a major revision of the system that we chose. Uh, it's called Intrasys. I won't tell you a huge amount about it because you'll hear about that in about two papers time from Jane. Um, so I want this more to reflect on the fact that pretty much any digital system that any unit is using will run into the issues that we discovered. Um, and it's also partly prompted by the fact that our software, our hardware rather, um, we bought it all in 2008 and it was falling to bits, as you can imagine with field computers. Um, right, in the beginning, there is the word. And the archeologist was created to write that word onto a piece of paper. Um, and here we have a medieval archeologist. You can tell he's an archeologist because he's filled out the top of his context sheet with his site code, etc. He's ignored all the text boxes in the middle. <laughs> and he's taken the big open text description area and he's filled it with a sketch plan instead. Um, and if you're lucky, he might come back and fill out the rest of it before he hands it in. Um, and for a very long time, we were exactly the same as every other unit in the country. That's how we worked. We worked with paper. And you then had a huge trail afterwards trying to marry together all the, the relationships between the context and the photos and the plans and so on, um, and make sure all the strat worked. And you could be in the field for a month and then in post -ex for another month, two months, three months, however long it took to get around to it. Um, Right, so um, we did, however, already have a database. Um, those of you who are very long in the tooth might remember Delilah. Um, it was part of a two-package suite. There was apparently a Samson that I never even saw. Um, and the idea of Delilah was that we would have a computer in a porta cabin and people would bring in their records and they'd be typed in and it would do all the sorts of checks and balances, make sure the strat worked and everything. And of course, it was way too complicated to use and the hardware wasn't robust enough to be on site. And by the time I joined the unit 25 years ago, it was essentially relegated to being a security copy. Um, we would do all the paperwork. We would do all the paper post-ex processing. Then we would hand the paper over to someone who would type it into Delilah. And the galling part was they would then hand it back to the project manager who'd have to check all the typed in records to make sure they were typed in correctly. Um, so not exactly uh, a great way to go. Um, and of course, other people were doing wonderful things around the start of the millennium. There was the Terminal 5 project. Dominic Palsland had been developing GSIS up in the Vale of Pickering. Mike Rains was doing the IADB in York. Um, there was PenMap, if anyone remembers that. Um, and we wanted a digital system. And we, we rooted around a bit um, and eventually chose Intrasys after deciding that we couldn't afford to actually build a system of our own which was our first um, idea. Um, and we looked at what other people were offering. Um, as a shameless plug, this is the fact that Intrasys has a website. If you actually want to learn about it, go there. I'm not going to tell you about it. Although you can always contact us down at Fort Cumberland if you want to discuss the subject. We're happy to. We've also developed all sorts of documentation to go with it and a metadata template if anyone wanted to just borrow those off us. We're a government agency, therefore it's your product rather than ours. So, um, but there are other systems out there and they all have the same complications. Okay, what we did know when we, when we started going digital, of course, was that amongst other things, we had to have survey data. Um, far too often you get 
in, in, the, in the days prior to the advent of things like robotic total stations, you would get someone who would take out a context record, they'd get partway through it, they'd never draw it, you would never know where it was. Um, and it may only happen once or twice on a site if you've got very diligent supervisors, but invariably it happened on the one context that you desperately needed to know the location of because it unlocked everything else in the sequence. Um, so we knew that we had to go, in terms of survey, um, not only collecting points for things like artifacts, etc., but also polygons because, you know, well, we wanted to see things on a map. So we, you know, we started with that concept. We already had a very complicated atomized text structure, um, very well developed, and we wanted to continue that. And this is one of my earlier slides from a previous talk, but it just shows the fact that we've got a very atomized record sheet already. And of course, you combine the two and you create a GIS. So we looked at the systems that were out there. We, we crossed some off because they would require us to change the way that we work fundamentally in order to fit their system. We crossed others off because they basically weren't supported. Um, and eventually we found interests that not only could we modify to make it work the way we wanted it to work, but also had a 24-hour help desk and was a grown-up piece of software. Um, all right, so last year, I believe it was, um, the major revision of Intrasys, that is Intrasys version 3, was put before us. Um, and we liked what we saw compared to the previous version, um, partly because the old version of Intrasys was actually two separate packages, one that was a data collection pseudo GIS and one that then was basically a stripped down version of, of Esri um, to do all your analysis. And invariably, we had the problem of getting people to leap mentally from the one to the other. Um, people get very gun shy of, of GIS packages. Um, this one, however, brings it all into one place. This is some of the few things I'm actually going to say about Intrasys. It brings it all in, into one piece of software, which makes it easier for people to get their heads around the tools, so they're more likely to actually use them. Um, it also offers some other new and improved <coughs> tools that we wanted, in particular, um, the symbology which has been worth its weight in gold for us. We could finally actually make all the things on the screen look the way we wanted. The, our levels could come in as little benchmarks and our small finds came in as little triangles and so on and so forth. Um, we had lots of fun times playing with that. And the, the graph views that I believe you'll hear about from Jane, um, sort of pseudo Harris matrices of relationships between records, uh, which allows quick checking of things that are basically wrong. Um, and um, better access to the, the actual template that you construct in order to make the software work, all the, the things you have to define before you can use it, um, where a lot of that was in the, the realms of the one person in our organization who was allowed to use SQL Server, um, now pretty much all of us who support the software can get in and monkey under the bonnet and get our, our fingers dirty. So we liked what we saw, and of course it also works well on Wi-Fi, which the previous version didn't like at all, at least not in our hands. Um, and that has major implications. Um, and of course, as I said, we needed something that would run better than on the old Windows XP machines that we had, uh, which uh, were almost as old as the dinosaurs. So um, in project planning, of course, we, we, we had to address a number of issues. And the one thing that perhaps the most odious man in Bush Jr.'s administration said that actually made sense, and for which he was duly ridiculed is this business about there being known knowns, known unknowns, and unknown unknowns, which is essentially things we can cost, things we can guesstimate, and things we, we don't even know about that blindside us halfway through it. Um, and in putting together a, a, um, a business case and a, a project plan to implement this, because of course we're a government agency, we like that sort of thing, um, we had to take these into account. And we had some known knowns. Um, we expected that we were going to spend some staff time sorting out hardware, um, working on the metadata template, and updating, we thought, a bit our guidance that we have. We have screeds of, of guidance notes that we've compiled, basically so that if any of us fall under a bus, the system can carry on and new people can learn how to use it. Um, so we knew we were going to do some of that. And we knew that because we'd had to go through all this when we bought the system in the first place. Um, and we also anticipated we were going to have various training sessions, at least two of them from Karen coming over from Sweden um, with all the costs attended, 
attendant there too. First, to get the, the core team of super users, as, as the interest's term is, of those of us who actually monkey with the metadata, um, in order to get us up to speed with what the system will do, so we could create the metadata and the new documentation, so that we can then teach the rest of our colleagues who just want to know how to use it to get their work done. Um, but then they had to have a second training session, and of course, getting 30 people into several days worth of training session um, is jolly hard work. So we knew there were there, these expenses, both in terms of time and in terms of cost. Um, and we knew there was a project management cost involved as well. Um, and you could put all that into a business case. So um, the crucial part of that, of course, is that all the staff who were involved in the upgrade um, were also the movers and shakers in us getting the system in the first place, and are all hideously busy. Um, so you have to plan very far ahead to get that kind of time. And we're talking, I don't know how many tens of person days over the course of, of the winter, but quite a few. Um, and we had some known unknowns. Um, we knew that some of the features in the software were changing and therefore some of our ways of working would have to change and thus our documentation would have to change. Um, but that we couldn't necessarily predict where all those changes were gonna be and thus the full scope of how much time we'd have to spend doing all this. Um, we also knew that we were going for Wi-Fi because the new system works on Wi-Fi and we want to be able to get out of a porta cabin with it. Um, but we don't know, we, at the time, we didn't know enough about the implications, the costs, et cetera, of the Wi-Fi. So it was, yeah, we knew there was gonna be a gray area. Um, and um, as a result, it was a bit of a guess on that side. Um, and when we switched to the new software, of course, all of our old databases, because we were getting rid of the old software because of the way the licenses worked, um, essentially all the old databases had to be migrated or abandoned. Um, and of the ones that were migrated, we then had to make some hard choices, which ones are actually going to be worked on in future and therefore need to be improved in terms of the metadata, and which ones just get upgraded but left with their old structure. Because of course, once you start tinkering with the data structure within a database that already has data in it, it's a nightmare. Um, so that's an ongoing process, and that cost is going to be pushed onto the individual projects rather than this upgrade project. Um, and then we had some unknown unknowns, of course. Um, we didn't expect the scope of which we were going to be rewriting our documentation. There aren't that many pages left in it that haven't been touched in some form or another, from screen grabs to processes where, no, you don't actually go A, B, C, you go A, D, B, C to get to the same destination. But it all means rewriting and it all means time from the handful of people who have the knowledge and the skill to do it. Um, and we didn't expect to also have to do the same to all the stuff on our survey instruments because Intrasys has a subtle change in the way it takes in the, the survey data, at least for the Leica equipment. So again, more time. Um, and we also didn't expect that we were gonna change the way we dealt with importing and handling photographs because Intrasys 3 opens up a new way of getting the stuff in that's more efficient, that's more practical, that allows us to get rid of a bunch of middleman stages in the process. But this is actually because it's basically a new feature rather than something we had to do as part of the old one. We could carry on with our old way of working. And these new features, of course, bring up the dreaded mission creep. Um, it's, it's amazing how much we could bolt on to this upgrade project that doesn't actually need to be part of the upgrade, but instead should be separate activities. Uh, and it's deciding where to draw the line um, okay, and there, there were some benefits, obviously, from, from the upgrade, so it wasn't all pain. Um, it allows, amongst other things, the, the, the two real highlights. First off, dealing with Excel tables, um, compared to the old version, it's a doddle getting data out in Excel spreadsheets that you could send to your specialists because they won't have Intrasys. So they can fill out the Excel spreadsheet with the guidance notes we send them. We can then suck it back in and repopulate all those fields on the existing records. Um, it, it's just so much nicer. Um, and then, of course, there's the Wi-Fi. Um, I ran the pilot project for Intrasys in 2008 when we, when we first bought it um, down at Dover, uh, one of the two pilots that we ran that year. Um, and then I ran the pilot for the upgrade 
in June this year at Belize, and of the three trenches we had, two of them were essentially paperless completely um, because of the Wi-Fi capabilities. So even with Intrasys, this was still very much how site recording happened. Uh, people writing on bits of dead tree with sticks full of ink at the trench side. Then they'd bring them into the site hut, and then they'd type them into the system because it was all wired together and couldn't go out in the field. Um, and you lose a lot of time back and forth. Then along came Wi-Fi, and then tablets. Well, not them. <laughs> and that led to in-the-trench recording. Or in this case, in this particular shot, at the picnic table recording because it was a nice sunny day. And they were mainly just tidying up some records in terms of putting stuff from planned drawings into the, into the database. So I'll forgive them for not being in the, in the trench, which is in the shade in a fairly windy, cold part of the site. But it makes a world of difference to the speed that we were working. We got rid of a huge amount of double handling in this particular instance. Um, and it's overall, the benefits to us in the future are going to outweigh the, the pain of the upgrade. Um, but the conclusions, this is a slide from 2009, hence the English Heritage logo down the bottom. Um, but it's still more or less true to an upgrade as it would be to you know, implementing a new system. The key thing is in the middle, but setting up and training materials takes time, and time is money and needs to be planned for. Um, and every WYSI system that's developed then imposes this on whoever becomes your customers. Um, so in summary, um, you have to plan for an upgrade more or less the same way you would plan for a new purchase, I think, uh, for something as complicated and as useful as digital recording systems. Uh, it's amazing how much time we sweep under the carpet you think, oh, I'll just fiddle with the survey equipment and we're just going to change this bit and that bit. But if you add it up over the course of the year, it, it's quite a bit of staff time disappears down those little rabbit holes. Um, and you have to sort out the key staff availabilities at the very beginning if you want something like this to work. Because, of course, getting hold of them can be a challenge. Um, and regardless of you know, how well you plan at the time estimates, if you, if you count up all your known knowns, as it were, uh, and double it, you should then hopefully be able to cope with all the rest that comes up. And that's, that's me.